today's video is going to be all about Fox body convertibles. Now for those of you that have been following along on my channel, you know that about seven or eight months ago I acquired this car in very good shape. However, I barely even drove it when I first got it. I brought it home, I took it apart, restored a bunch of things, got it back together and then about mid-summer I got the opportunity to get it out on the road, put some miles on it, shake things down and see what it's all about to have a Fox body convertible. Now what I hope to do with this video is I want to try to give people some real world examples as to what it's like to own one of these cars. I've got my coupe under the cover that I've owned for well over 20 years and I, I can draw up between the two and, and give you those comparisons. I even had a little LX hatch for a, a short period of time so can give you some experience there too. Anyway if you're in the market right now for any kind of Fox body for that matter or you're maybe even considering a convertible I think this video is going to help you a ton. First things first, let's talk about convertible noises. And welcome to the cab of the 1991 Vert. And reach our new um, high and low side, anything else other than those two. Now because you've got a canvas roof and not a hard top roof, these canvas roofs, they do not have the same insulation values that a hard top roof does. So at highway speeds or any speed for that matter, this roof does not insulate much sound. So that's one set of noises. Another set, and it's all due to the fact that that top goes down, these cars, they'll, they twist a lot more than a hard top car would because of the lack of upper rigidity, right, with a solid roof. Now, they do have a bit of a pinch weld subframe connector system. It's not really a subframe connector, but I think Ford considered it something along those lines. And then there's also a cross brace that goes over the K-member to try to stiffen up these cars. I don't know how much they really do. I'm sure they do something, but it's thin tin and it's, yeah. They, they need upgrades in that department. At any rate, if and when, you know, you pull into a bit of an uneven sidewalk, parking lot scenario, the car will creak or crack or whatever. And I mean, obviously they're old. These cars make noises, but these convertibles make more noise than anything I'm used to in my coupe or the LX hatch that I had. The next item you're going to want to keep in mind is convertibles are a lot heavier than the hardtop cars. I've always known this and now admittedly I haven't had this car on a scale so I don't know exactly how much, I just know that they are that much heavier. And the way that I found this out somewhat the hard way is I, I just always assumed I thought well I know they're heavier but how much heavier could they be? Well I went to lower this car and a friend of mine locally had some lowering springs for a hardtop car and I thought oh, I'll give it a try whatever I just want to bring it down a couple inches. Well lower the front all's well. Go to lower the rear and this car as I get it off the jack stands literally tuck the tires up into the wheel wells. It was that drastic of a difference and now I've always known when you're ordering lowering kits, there's a difference between convertibles and hardtops. The spring rates are different and it's because of the weight. I, in my ignorance, just thought, how much different could it be? Well, let me tell you, it's staggering. So these cars are that much more heavier than a hardtop, for sure. And for obvious reasons, you've got a, a convertible top and all the mechanics that go into it that sit in the back end of this car. So. They add some weight and all the extra bracing to make it a convertible, right? Um, now, unless you're racing the car, the, well, the only reason that I can see the weight concern would be maybe fuel, mi fuel mileage. Uh, they're going to be a little heavier versus a hardtop car. But I think if you're buying a car like this, you're not too worried about fuel mileage. You just want to get out and enjoy it. But something to keep in mind nonetheless. Next up, we've got parts for convertibles. Now, the vast majority of parts are interchangeable from a convertible to a hardtop car. The obvious one not being the top. However, some various other items to keep in mind. The mirrors are different. Some in interior bits and pieces are different. It's got a switch for running the top, whereas a hardtop wouldn't. So, something else to keep in mind. If you're shopping on your local classifieds and you're looking for some parts and you just see Fox body parts for cheap, just know there's some differences between convertibles and hardtops. Next up we've got servicing and now when I say servicing I don't mean your standard tire rotations and oil changes and spark plugs and things of that nature. I'm speaking more about your quarterly and yearly tune-ups. Okay, So when you're adjusting things. Now specifically 
on this convertible I'm referring to the top and the windows I've gone out in this car where everything is nails as good as I could have it and I come home and I realize that my window doesn't close like it did when I left the house or whatever these cars are getting old right this one's now 32 years old and it's a little bit of an archaic system but it takes time and it takes love and you need patience and just know that you're going to have to do some adjusting on these cars so they're not for the faint of heart um, I think you need a little bit more of uh, mechanical aptitude to bail on one a car like this because if you don't know anything about making adjustments to these cars chances are it might not be the best investment for you look more towards the hardtop cars but yeah they, they they're finicky and they they take time and lots of adjustments okay guys i brought sadie in here to give us the final verdict on the convertible what do you think mm, i like how the top rolls down right and yeah, what do you I call like how the top rolls down what do you call it ruby the red dragon ruby the red dragon right this is what my girls call the car um we love it we absolutely love it as a family it's brought us a ton of joy and we get out for ice cream in it we put the top down it's just a whole different level of appreciation for these fox body cars when you got the roof down and uh yeah so anyway i hope this information helps you guys that are watching uh, if you got any questions about a car that you may be looking at and you want my opinion on it or or maybe i didn't explain something good enough for you by all means hit me up and i'll try my best to help you out so Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Subscribe down below. <laughs> Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>